Hello, welcome to Kingdom Encounter 6. If you are joining us for the first time, I want to particularly welcome you to this broadcast. Today we are looking at helping us to understand our assignment in the world as ch children of God or citizens of God's kingdom. In the past few weeks, we have been looking at different aspects of our kingdom relationship, what we have examined, what we mean by God's kingdom. We have looked at the different aspects, the characteristics of this kingdom. And then last week, we looked at what it is to be a citizen of God's kingdom. You know, and we said that we are in the world as ambassadors of God's kingdom. And then we looked at the definition of an ambassador. We said that an ambassador is an official envoy, especially a high-ranking diplomat who represents a state and is usually accredited to another sovereign state or to an international organization as the resident representative of their own government or sovereign or appointed for a special and often temporary diplomatic assignment. I love that word temporary there because it always reminds me that we are in this world temporarily as well and so we haven't got much time to waste. The Bible encourages us to occupy until he comes. We have work to do and so we need to get about it and if you are still alive today it is because God has not finished with you yet because you have some assignment to do. So as a citizen of God's kingdom, you find that you are in the world, but you represent a different kingdom. In some countries like the United Kingdom, Nigeria, Ghana, they have dual citizenship. You can be a citizen of Ghana and a citizen of the United Kingdom. But in some countries like Singapore, Austria, Saudi Arabia, and some others, you cannot be a citizen of two, king, of two countries. If you want to take on the citizenship of another country, you have to give up your citizenship of, uh, of one. So it is in God's kingdom. You cannot belong to the world and belong to the kingdom of God at the same time. It's, God, it's either one or the other. See, so and that, Jesus knew that we are going to face this conflict, this difficulty, and that was why before he left the world, you know, he prayed. He prayed for us. For us that, here is what he says. He says, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. You see, Jesus knew we were going to face this challenge. And that is why he prayed. See, he was charging his disciples before he left. He said, listen, go. I'm sending you out. You are going to go out as sheep in the midst of wolves. The world is not going to love you just as they didn't like me. But you see, that is why he prayed for us, you know. And he now charged them to go into the world. This is our assignment. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And he says, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. The sick will recover. You see, when Jesus was in the world, he was our perfect example. He demonstrated these things and showed us how to do it, to show us that it is not complicated at all. You know, and, and so he will not ask us to do something that he himself did not do. And in uh, Acts 1, 8, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses to me. Hmm. 
in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth. So your Jerusalem as a child of God, your home, your kingdom ministry starts in your home. How are you representing God's kingdom in your home? In your community where you live, amongst your neighbors, in your place of work. And then some of us go on missionary trip, but let us not forget it begins with where we are. Your home is meant to be a mini heaven on earth. Nobody is saying it's easy, but the Lord will help us. You see, so he's called us and he has equipped us. So when we have the Holy Spirit, we have the power to do this. Our assignment is to go. Because if we don't go, how will people, how will they hear? Look at what Romans 10 says. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. You see, our responsibility is to tell them. We tell them how to be saved. In fact, just two days, when I come in contact with people, I... It's so straightforward. Whether it's on the phone, the guy who calls you, you know, you, you, you call the insurance company or whatever and, and they say to you, okay, is there anything else I can do for you? Oh, yes. Just before you leave, let me just tell you, God loves you, has a great plan for your life. The postman that delivers parcel to you, before he leaves, you share the love of God with him. The workmen who come to do work in your home, they are all, see, we come in contact with people every day. But the, pro the, the problem is we need to live intentionally and purposefully. So when you wake up in the morning, as you're having your time with God, you're going to say, God, help me today to be a blessing. Somebody is going to come in. I'm going to come in contact with somebody today. Give me the right word. Help me to be a blessing. Help me to make an impact in somebody's life today. Help me to touch somebody with the love of God. Everywhere people are hurting. Especially in the days that we live in now. With so much evil everywhere. We can pray. Pray for our neighbors. There is something known as prayer evangelism. Where you pray. As you are walking down your street. You are stretching your hands. Blessing your neighbors. Praying for them. Praying for their salvation. When you see a neighbor in need. You, you are the first person to be there. To show them the love of God. These things are not complicated. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jesus left us a good example, which <coughs> we are going to watch in a minute, just to tell us that we encounter people every day. Just watch this little clip now and see how Jesus did it. He what are the things that we did? What are the mistakes from which we can learn as we are going there? And this is what athletes do. After a football game, what do you think they do? They sit down and play the match. For the, the player, so they can see. This is what's happened here. Next time, this is the this is what you, you need to do. You see, we take stock of where we have been. What are the things we analyze? Where are the things that went wrong? Some of the projects we could not execute. What happened? Hmm. And how can we make it better? Hmm. We revisit our strategy. We, we when we are planning through the help of the Holy Spirit, we say, Lord, we missed it here. And we learn and we move on. You know? And then for us, as children of God, our job is made easy. What is our goal? What is our goal? Where are we aiming for? You see, Paul said, I don't fight as one who is beating the air. No. I don't fight as one who is beating the air. Jesus has given us clear command in Mark 16 and in Matthew 28. It says, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. So that is, a, we have, that is a job we have on hand. How do we achieve that job? And that's one thing I like about Jesus. The Bible says, he left us an example. How did he do it? How did he do it? Let's open to Matthew chapter 25. I love, I love that passage of scripture. Because sometimes...
we think that doing this work of the kingdom is difficult. No. You see, before we read the passage in Matthew, just remember Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. Out before we read Matthew, let's open to John, because that, that will take us to where we're going. John chapter 4, very quickly. It's a very familiar story. You know, very, very familiar story. To help us to understand. You see, my message, I'm looking at how we attain new heights using king, kingdom mindset. Scaling new highs through having a kingdom mindset. Because we cannot do it otherwise. We cannot scale new heights. It's almost like trying to say we want to fight a spiritual battle with physical hands. It's not possible. Because our battle is a spiritual one. And Jesus left us a good example. That's why he said to his disciples, when you pray, say, let your kingdom come. And let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All that are goal here, in this church, in our individual lives, is to establish God's kingdom everywhere we are. Establish the kingdom of God. That is all. And that is why he says that we are strangers and pilgrims on this earth. We are not here to represent ourselves. No. We are here to show God's kingdom in our everyday encounters with people. And that's it. Jesus is the example of the woman at the well. He's just sitting by a well. It's like we are like going to a shop. He sits by a well. Waiting. You see, he knows, he said, the disciples are going to buy bread. So they are thinking bread. But Jesus is thinking kingdom. So he's thinking, oh God. He's sitting there thinking, Lord, I hope somebody will come and fetch water at this well. That's what he thinks. Because he has the kingdom mindset. I'm going to, somebody is going to encounter me today. Lord, I want to share my love with somebody today. I wish I would pray this every morning. Lord, don't let another this day go by without me blessing somebody without me touching some life mm. because if we don't have a kingdom mindset our life will be mundane the christian life will be dull and boring we will only be thinking of ourselves me mine mm. jesus sat at that well he was hungry they want to buy bread but here comes a woman to fetch water and jesus says oh please give me water to drink just simple conversation mm. and from that simple conversation the woman is thinking, you see, she has an, a worldly mindset. Jesus is thinking kingdom. Say, so give you water to do. You are a Jew. And it's all right. We have no, nothing in common again, you see. She's thinking tradition. And that is how we think. Because if we think tradition, we will never see people, we will never save people, we will never see them established in God's kingdom. Jesus says, and he says to the, and Jesus says, give me water to drink. See, how can you? Jesus says, ah, if you know the person talking to you, you will ask him. He will give you living water. Hmm. And he says, and now she's thinking earthly again. How can you give me water? You don't have anything to fetch with. Hmm. But Jesus is saying, you don't understand, woman. You see, when you drink this water, you come up. But the water, kushaba, Jesus. The water I'm going to give you, hmm. when you drink it, you will not thirst again. Hmm. And then the woman says, please, give me this water, verse 15 of John chapter 4, so that I may not come here to draw. Again, you see, she's thinking physically. Physical water she would drink. Jesus is having a kingdom mindset here. Hmm. Now, the work has begun. Hmm. Go and call your husband. Ah. Now, you see, it's because Jesus is thinking kingdom. He's looking through her soul. Jesus is there to meet her needs. He's not thinking about the hunger that he has at the moment. He's thinking about her spiritual need. So from give me water to drink, he says, okay, go and call your husband. Now the real work starts. And the woman says, I don't have a husband. You see, the thing is, when we encounter people, one of the things I do, you see, when we encounter people every day, I have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit as I'm going along. Let's open to First Corinthians chapter 9. I know I, asked, I talked about Matthew. We'll come to that. Let's open to First Corinthians. Because see, it's all about having First Corinthians 9. First Corinthians 9 from verse 19. 
First Corinthians chapter 9, from verse 19. It says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, <coughs> excuse me, as though as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means, by all means, save some. Now I did this for the gospel's sake. And I might be a particular of it with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, you see, I have become all things. You see, when I'm here, we, uh, why do you think we started kids club? It is part of that kingdom mindset. I come in here, I, be, I become like one of those kids, jumping with them. Because at that point in time, I have made myself, I've turned myself into a child so that I can reach those children with the love of God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's all about meeting people where they are. For Jesus and this woman, it was just water. And then the disciples came. And asked, what are the things? Of how it is that we can share the gospel from the example of Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. Very simple. Give me water to drink. He was very intentional. He was purposeful. He knew why he was there, waiting that somebody will come by. It's the same thing with us. When you are going to the shopping mall, going to work on the bus, on tax, anywhere, we have to share the love of Jesus. Just be intentional. Hello, how are you today? I'm um, this person. Introduce yourself. You know, we can talk. It's simple conversation. They like talking about the weather in this country. You can use that. But the important thing is being intentional. Knowing that you are there. In that place, at that point in time. Representing God's kingdom. You are an ambassador of God's kingdom. And this thing about having a kingdom mindset is very crucial. Otherwise, we'll be wasting our time. You see, when we, when you find a lot of people really confused, you don't know where they belong, whether they belong to the world or whether they belong to God's kingdom because they are confused. Sometimes we think because we are physically in the world, oh, it gives us the liberty to do whatever we like. No. No. So we're going to pray now as we round up this and ask God to really help us to give us this kingdom mindset that when we come in contact with people that we will begin to impact them. We're going kingdom mindset. Kingdom thinking. No longer about you. No longer about you and your need. Me, my, my, my. No. Kingdom mindset. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in you. Kingdom of God. Be established in my life. In my neighborhood. And the Tell to God. Enough is enough. Feel uncomfortable with where you are. Enough, you are not saved just for yourself. Jesus says, abide in me. If anyone abides in me, he'll be fruitful. Ask God to help you to abide in the vine so you can draw life. You can draw life. Jesus says, if you I am the water of life, he who drinks in me will never thirst. Just ask God to energize you this morning, to empower you, to empower you, to empower you, to empower you. Kingdom mindset. Kingdom thinking. Thank you, Father. Yes, I believe that God will really help us. We cannot do anything in our own strength. I, I really hope you have been blessed by this um, today's message about our assignment. We are not just sent to individuals. Next week, don't miss it, please. We'll look at because it says going to all the world, make disciples of nations. Nations, <laughs> you see, I'm still struggling to 
to talk to individuals now, but he says, you will disciple nations. And we can see it's very easy. And please don't miss next week. And uh, before we leave, I would like to invite you to please visit my website, ngozokike.com. You'll find those books there are life-changing. If you have not read any of my books, I encourage you, just get any one of them. You'll be amazed. They are all on Amazon. I have loads and loads of, also I've got loads of messages on YouTube. You can watch other inspirational messages that will really bless you and on YouTube. You can also join me on Twitter at ngozukk one and you can follow me on Instagram at ngozukk. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I look forward to being with you same time next week. Please leave your comments and let me know how this message has blessed you and share share it with your friends thank you so much for watching god bless you bye for now